What's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary Top of the Moot reaction video. Let's go, man. You guys absolutely love the Larry Bird trash talk stories, and this one is one of the greatest and funniest trash talking moments of all time. Now, a few months ago, I posted a Larry Bird video that did quite well on this channel, and it featured Dominic uh, years later the whole Atlanta Hawks team, and it is hilarious. Larry Bird is one of the greatest players of all time, but He's arguably the greatest trash talker of all time as well, and this video proves that. So if you do enjoy videos just like this one, I'd really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. If you do enjoy it by the end of the video, subscribe if you are new for videos just like this one. I also want to give full credit to all the podcast priorities. I don't enjoy it. Neighbors trash talk strikes again. You guys play the Celtics big three in the playoffs, 88. What were those matchups like? They're brutal. We were trying to go at each other's throat. It was mm. unbelievable. I mean, our game set. Trying to go at each other's throat. Let's see how that turned out. Game seven of the 1988 Eastern Conference semifinals for Dominique Wilkins and the Hawks and Larry Bird and the Celtics. It was a time to test their championship resolve. For three quarters, the teams fought to a standstill. But it was only a prelude to what was to come. As the final quarter began, a grueling personal contest of can you top this was about to begin. Mmm, can you top this? Let's see who's going to be on the top of their game in this legendary game right here. Two men who brought out the best in each other. The bird can fly higher than any hawk. I like the trash talk, man. I'm loving the spirit. Um, two individuals, as he said, is basically pushing each other to the highest, to their fullest potential and fullest extent to then show all their capabilities and showcase it. Also to the amazing fans and supporters along with this competitive game right here. Um, important game, I should say, as well. Wow. This is the full story. Excuse the ad, family. Um, let this joint go by real quick. And then we're going to get into the video, you know what I'm saying? While I was in college, I used to watch and get Sports Illustrated, and I remember seeing Dominique Wilkins. And I said, mm. man, I would love to play with this guy, not knowing anything about you got a little posterized go there. Yeah, a little. Was that Larry Bird he called himself posterizing? Because if he did that, man, he's going to regret that. I used to watch and get Sports Illustrated, and I remember seeing Dominique Wilkins. I said, man, I would love Yeah, that was Larry Bird. It was a little posterized. I mean, my man could get up. I got to give it to him. But at the end of the day, you should never did that, buddy. Because at the end of the day, it's going to come right back at you. With this guy, not knowing anything about the Hawks, but it was like, I would love to play with him. And then ended up getting drafted by Atlanta. Now Nick's my teammate. And I was like, I mean, a, a dream come true. You think about those Atlanta teams with Dominique and Spud and Doc Rivers. Tree Rollins. And so, we, you know, they, they for sure had, a, had the respect of us. Kevin Willis was a good player. And, um, and, and Dominique and Doc Rivers and Spud Webb came off their bench. Mm. Randy with Trey Rollins, Kevin Rollins, 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 Kevin, Kevin Willis, Willis, yeah. I Jump mean, Hook, Cliff yeah. Robinson, Cliff Levinson, the original big. It seemed like my guy's specialty is being an offensive threat in regards of running up the court, driving, um, getting down in the paint, and he's doing dunks, man. But at the end of the day, how many dunks can you get in with the impactful legend himself, Lay Bird, being in your presence? You know what I'm saying? You can fly and create space and be fancy within this dunk, the dunking game. Or, you know, you dunking and leaping up in the air. But let's be real. How many times or how many times you think if you're even going to have a time to do this against Larry Bird? Yeah, you had that one time or whatever. But at the end of the day, if somebody really lock him down, which I know Larry Bird would, 
How many donks would you get off? I believe zero. Yeah. yeah. We were growing, we were young, we were really athletic. We had that 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 energy that a team would need. Mm -hmm. and all we had to do was build chemistry, begin to understand each other's games, weaknesses and strengths. And we did that and we started to flourish after the first four or five years. They were a deep team that could score the ball and if we weren't at our best, we we're in trouble. But with mm -hmm. that team, they were so fun to watch because Dominique was the headliner but everyone else around them. When you talk about Spud Webb, they would come over and play with us across the Georgia Tech. You see, this little joker can flat out go. First small guy getting the dunk contest, win the dunk contest, all that hype around them. The question would be, when it got crunch time, the other team would outsmart them. That was their well, 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 that was When it got crunch time, the other team would outsmart them. But at the end of the day, you can be a scorer. You could dunk all you want. But with, take the dunk away from your game. How many playmaking abilities or playmaking opportunities can you then create in a smart way that's strategic but that will only not only leave you to impact the game and impact your team positively, but also to get that W, which is the overall objective to win the game, right? A good bunch to not, yes. to not win at all. And, and they had that one, remember the, the Dominique, Larry Bird, big yep. shooter? Yeah. Was, it's game seven. In 1988, against the Atlanta Hawks, Dominique and Larry Bird. One of the most clutch mm -hmm. moments. Larry Bird was the 1980 NBA Rookie of the Year. But watching it as a kid got me hyped. I went outside and started shooting outside <laughs> of the playground, yeah. pretending I was both of y'all. But 1988, that had yeah. to be one of the best moments. Conference semifinals, Neek and Bird. Game seven, the Dominique mm. Bird series. Shot Kyle. for shot. Mm. Shot for shot. Dominique and Bird going back and forth. You know, we... we we should have eliminated, eliminated them in six. You should have eliminated them in six. So if you know you should have eliminated them in six, then why you didn't do it? Let's see why he didn't do it. Because we all probably know why just by just having the word Larry Bird, I mean the name Larry Bird being in this game. You got stopped, but let's go. The whole series was crazy. Uh, game one and two, the Celtics won by like a combined 80 points. Like they blew us out. As the Hawks found themselves down to the final gasp. But back home in the Omni, they were flying high. The offensive spark plug, little Spud Webb, found a way to slither through the Celtic defense, putting together a career best playoff performance and igniting the Hawks to a much needed victory. I remember coming back from game three to Atlanta and a big article. Uh, in Atlanta uh, Journal was put a fork in him, we're done, you know? And then we win game three and then win game four, go into Boston uh, and win game five. And that was a great game. I thought, I think we took control. Okay, you won game five and nine times out of 10, they probably got all hyped because they won game five. I think they could take the whole series. And that most likely ended up didn't happen because they already said they should eliminate them game six. This is me going on based on what they said beforehand before they said they had it. Before Doc Rivers said they had a good run in game five. So let's get it. Atlanta Hawks just will not surrender to the favorite Boston Celtics. It's kind of a clash of two worlds. In Bird, you've got somebody who's already an icon. Mm -hmm. He's already been uh, sanctified as a Boston Saint. And Dominique represents a different kind of basketball. We had him, Matt, the one time. We were up 3-2. We won game five uh, in Boston. We was not supposed to win that game, you know, the critics say. So we knew going to game six, I said, man, we could, we could advance and we can beat these guys. The frenetic Hawks, led by the Freakazoid, had old school Boston by the throat. Up three games to two in the best of seven series. All Atlanta has to do is go down to Atlanta and close the series out. And then the last play in game six. Um, uh, basically, I blew it. Let's see. Was, you know, Dominique and I were the two guys that score. And at the end of the game, we drew up a play. Uh, I called a timeout because they knew what we were running. Uh, we called another one. It turned into a broken play. I Look how smart. That's where it goes to them outsmarting the Hawks. And Larry Bird and the Celtics outsmarted. Anytime your team, anytime your opponent can know your play, and then they leave you confused and broken, where you basically scrambling to then create some type of play, make an opportunity. Uh, that's some top level stuff right there, man.
But let's see what happens. I got the ball to Cliff Livingston, and he was supposed to dribble handoff to either me or Dominique. DJ read it, uh, and he top-sided me. Uh, Cliff looked at Dominique, and then Cliff went on his own. Went to back with left hand uh, running hook. I was mad. Cliff's right-handed. He shot a left-handed hook shot. Cliff said, I want to shine. Y'all got too much of the shine. I know you, Doc, you and Doc, sorry, Phil. I know you and Doc Rivers want to score, but guess what, buddies? Not this time. I'm going to handle it, and I'm going to try to come up with a clutch-making shot, with a clutch play and a clutch shot to make the play-making opportunity um, of a lifetime, which went wrong. Livingston, no. You know, so the game, come bro. to me, and I'm like, Woody, don't break the play, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and so we end up losing that game, and after the game. And I remember this old lady at the airport. I mean, and I'm not exaggerating. She may have been 80. Um, you know, had her little purse, and she walked up to me. Hey, Rivers, you thought you wasn't coming back, did you? <laughs> I, I, I will never forget that. I wish I knew who that lady was. Uh, Barrett made a prediction. He said, Atlanta blew their opportunity. I'm guaranteeing a win mm -hmm. in Boston. Well, they had their chance. You know, they had a big chance uh, to beat us. I think now that we're going to come out and, and play like we did tonight, but we're going to be at home. And Ain't nothing like having that good old home game energy. Feeding off the energy of the fans that keep you going, that keep you pushing. Mm, they done sold it. The Hawks done sold it, and y'all done woke up the dragon. And our shots are going to be dropping a little bit better, and we're going to be running a little bit faster. So I'd say Sunday's going to be a big win for the Celtics. And we had to look at that, right? I guarantee a win. Atlanta blew their opportunity. And I'm like, hey, hey I don't know what bird talking about. I, we have a great opportunity. We going in there. We going to kick their butt. We coming to win. It, it, I don't care what he said. Mm -hmm. We get to Boston, and we walk out of the locker room, and I stop. I said, we gonna win this bleep bleep game. I said, if you ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war. If you guys ain't ready to fight, you ain't ready to go to war. Don't even come on the court. Don't come up. Don't come on the court, man. You ain't ready for what's gonna come. You ain't ready for the competition. Don't don't even worry. Don't even worry about it. Just save yourself. Save yourself while you can now. Catch a break. Go home. So whoever guarding me tonight gonna have a long night. Unfortunately, Bird was saying the same thing in the other locker room, <laughs> in the other locker room to, to his teammates. So it, it, um, it set up for one of the greatest shootouts ever in the, in the seventh game. And I remember Larry Bird, he uh, he passed by a locker room. He like, there's nobody in here can guard me. <laughs> but he was just playing, though. Yeah, yeah, because he was free. Not only did he know before the game, he let everybody know, including his own team. Remember before this big game against Dominique that Larry was out shooting and I was out shooting early at one end of the court. Larry was down at the other end and I noticed that Larry was down there like shooting left-handed jump hooks from like 12, 15 feet. Now he made left-handed shots, but I saw him shooting right-handed jump hooks from 12 or 15 feet. And I went down there and go like, what are you doing? He goes, my Achilles tendons are killing me. My step back isn't, it won't work tonight. I need See, he know he he knew himself. He knew his abilities. He know how to revamp his gameplay in regards to whatever circumstance. This is what I mean with Larry Bird is a legend. Not only was he he had the skills, he had the will, but he had the the IQ of a legend to the point where my man said, "Okay, I can outsmart these individuals along with reading the court, reading their plays." You know, reading what they're going to go about, how they're going to go about things in regards to who they top key players. And also having to look at myself and analyze myself and my capabilities based on where I'm standing at in my current circumstances situation in regards to my health, taking everything into consideration in regards, okay, how can I be most impactful to myself um, playing the game to then create some type of effect for us to have the overall objective to win the game, but also be impactful along with my teammates so we can then overcome this and, and advance and win this series. So I got to change up and ship shape some things based on my Achilles and my tendons and so forth. So I got to change my game a little bit. That would be a better impact. That would be a better impact for me to still be effective and um, come through and, you know, and do what I need to do, let alone alongside my teammates, man. That, man, listen. Jump up. And he made something in that game. I mean, it's just unbelievable. That just tells you his confidence and tells yeah. you like, what kind of a player he was just to 
have a game plan of what shots he was going to make that mm -hmm. night. So it, it, um, it set off one of the greatest shootouts ever in the in seventh game. Despite Bird's brash words, the Hawks seemed unintimidated. And it would quickly become apparent that if Larry was to make good on his prediction, he would have to contend with a high-flying Dominique Wilkins, who would simply play the game of his life. May 22, 1988. And my birthday, May 18th. And I wasn't born to 99. The tip goes to mm -hmm. Boston. We came into game seven with the right mindset, uh, believing that we would have a chance to win game seven. You know, it was one of those Sundays in the Boston Garden, uh, hot, uh, you know, crowd crazy. Uh, they expected they were going to win. Uh, I don't think they expected to have a, a tussle like they had in that game. Game seven would go down as one of the greatest games in NBA history. Dominic was an unstoppable player. No guy could guard him in the league man for man. You could see his competitiveness. You could see his determination in that game seven. There was only one player on the floor could match his will. Of course, man. That's Larry Legend Bird, man. That's Larry Birdie in the building, bro. But at the end of the day, I feel like Larry had rented real estate or a permanent residence in the head um, because for them to have to go shot for shot. See, Larry is a vet. 40, 40 50, 100,000 eyes on him. You know, fans and so forth. You know, making the Celtics out of nothing. Creating a big three or whatever. But it's a simple fact that Larry been down his road. Been under pressure. Been making clutch plays where it becomes a norm. Where Dominique Wilkins, who wants to be the flying hawk all the time. You know, it's like, bro. Can you, can you set in and play through this type of high vibrational type of intense gameplay here you know what i'm saying so someone who been doing it versus someone yeah they they used they they known for flying and dunks and nobody can guard them or whatever the case may be but from a vet that been doing this and you coming along doing this and trying to go shot for shot as a as a vet which made this a legendary game but at the end of the day larry is already comfortable and confident within himself where he let he got in other people's heads where they feel like they had to prove themselves to larry but no, Larry didn't let nobody get in his head. You know what I'm saying? Because he know himself and his capabilities. Bird is open. Do they want him to take that shot? With six points on the drive. Terry picks for Bird. Gets the roll. Shooting hand wide open. Bird with a very difficult angle gets it to fall. And I remember... He only had 12 points going to fourth quarter. I remember coming down the floor, and I remember myself, Larry Bird, and Kevin Willis. I really believe this. The reason why Larry Bird got so hot in that game, in that fourth quarter, Kevin Willis and I and Bird was running down the court. We run down the court, and Kevin reached across me, put his hands, and puts his finger in Larry Bird's chest. Said, chest said, Don't let this so-and-so score anymore. Kevin Willis then added fuel to the fire. Kevin Willis came over and said, Nick, don't let him score tonight. And Bird's standing around. next to him. I'm looking at Kevin. Uh, what you doing? What are you doing? You know, his bird eyes got like this big. You don't want to wake him a sleeping giant. Mm -hmm. He got 12 points. I don't, don't wake him up. <laughs> <laughs> are you crazy? <laughs> Leave him sleep. Hey, 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 let him stay asleep. Sleep, yes. What you doing? Woke him up. You don't wake up a sleeping giant. <laughs> sleeping giant. His eyes got that big. You know, it's like his eyes it's got this big. <laughs> I look at Kevin, what are you doing? <laughs> and from that. Kevin, the one that added fuel to the fire, but Dominique was the one to back up his, to carry his team, let alone back up his teammate in regards of actually executing. But Kevin got the most, it's always the ones that do the most talking. I don't do nothing, man. It was, it was a shooting match. That fourth quarter was unbelievable. Larry was torturing him. Dominique was torturing me on, on when he had the ball. 
that fourth quarter, maybe the best fourth quarter as far as uh, mono mono of all time. Bird gets it in low on the turnaround against Wilkins. Mano, mano. At least Dominique Wilkins tried to back up his teammate talk, even though he wasn't the one that was doing all the talking. He was just like, let the dragon sleep. But let alone that Larry Bird wasn't feeling well. And that's not just skill power. At that point, that just that's just it ain't even willpower no more. That's just legend that's just legend power. That's just legendary power right there. And my man basically like, okay, you wanna talk that smack? My man worked through that pain. He used that pain as motivation, let alone Kevin Wilkins sitting here talking that smack. Like, you know what? I'ma just get even more furious in my game. I gotta come down and offensively, I gotta carry the load and I gotta keep us going. It's turn. And I remember sitting down before the fourth quarter and I'm watching the game. And I remember they took me out for a blow and Kevin and uh, Cliff Livingston came in the game and he got hot. And I remember coach said, all right, Nick, go in there and slow him down. I said, slow him down. He hot now, he forget <laughs> that. Yeah. That's the only thing I can do is try to match him bucket for bucket. That's what turned out one of the greatest Fourth quarter's ever. So we're playing, mm -hmm. and the ball goes up. You know how you, you, you clear space, you right. get that rebound every day. You're not even worried about it. Because I push it, and I, I go up to get it. And all of a sudden, man, there's just a force all over my shoulder. <laughs> he grabs it, he dunks it. You know those short shorts? <laughs> they were right here. <laughs> I tell you right now. I, I mean, he threw that thing down, and I was like, oh my. And Larry has the classic line. Larry goes, shoot, I better, better box that guy out. Okay, huh, I said, yeah, I suggest. Yeah, you better box that guy out. But I love it how it's just two legendary individuals pushing each other to be at the top of their game, being on their P's and Q's, and you better not let up. I suggest you put a body on him. <laughs> that was one of the craziest things ever. I'd never seen a guy that high in my life. Oh he just threw God. it down. Short shorts right here, huh, kid? Right here, baby. That was not, I still have nightmares about that, Smitty. <laughs> Obviously. You had 47 in that yeah. game. Larry Bird had 34, but 20 of those in that quarter. But like I said, I think he ended up with 34 for the game. I don't think it was the, uh, uh, so much edge they had. I just thought it was a player that they had, and that was Larry Bird. Just like it was a player that, that y'all had, which was you, Dami e. Wilkins, you know I feel? It's time. Who basically put the team on his shoulders in that fourth quarter. Yeah. Just like you had to put your team on your shoulders but Larry been doing this, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying Dominique haven't been doing this, but at the end of the day, he's a vet doing this, man. The Celtics are ahead of the Atlanta Hawks. 84-82 will return to the Garden. Make it easier for him to bring the ball up. Bird now cuts free. The defense. Tied at 88. You got to love how Larry Bird follows through with his shot, man. Did that left hook and he was just ready in case it didn't go in. With Bird in point up, putting Boston ahead. Bird attempting to break free, stays with it and the Now with the tripping forward trick shot, man. Call the continuation for Larry Bird. We're up by seven. Dominique hits a three. Lead to Bird off the fake, improves his position. Wilkins ties it for Atlanta. You know, Dominique was pretty much the whole game. Larry, uh, the fourth quarter, uh, kind of then, uh, you know, carried their team. That's what made him so great. Wilkins got a high shot, bro. He he, he paused like he just like mid air just. He do the little, little sizzly, wormy, snaky type move, and then he like release the ball. Between the two of them. Bird got a fast play. Bro, that was two people, I think. Look. Two people on this man, and look, he still makes the shot. Yeah, 
Get off that man. Get off that man. Wilkins need to get his defense up. We began the broadcast by telling you about Larry Bird, who following the game six victory by the Celtics in the middle. Larry and let him make the read because if they come double, he's going to make the right play. Um, and the game wasn't that complicated for him, and he made some tough shots. Like I said, some left-handed running hooks, and, you know. And again, he wasn't he wasn't feeling great at that time of the year, at that moment. And um, to watch, that's why he was probably just like smooth selling. And then it made him real furious. He probably like, look, I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna push through this pain. It's you know not feeling well. And then when y'all, when I want to test him more, he said, man, he said, forget this pain. My eyes. You didn't put you know, fire through his eyes. Just gut it out and just to will his body to mm -hmm. even finish that game, let alone score 20 in the fourth quarter of a game seven is, is mind-boggling to me. Larry Bird, Larry Bird that night was, listen, uh, it, it was unbelievable. And he was so clutch. Nick was just as clutch that night. It's just that Larry in the fourth quarter was unstoppable. So clutch is not just the final yeah. three or four seconds of the game. Mm. And the thing is, we were sending everybody at him to so slow him down. They were sending everybody at him. It didn't matter. So hot that I think one of the shots he hit was a left-handed three. That's when you know a guy is mm. in yeah. the zone. Mm. Bird attempting to break three. Stays with it and the foul is called. Oh, continuation for Larry Bird. Two lead changes. The Celtics once were up by seven. Because they knew who was going to get the ball. It's like Robert Parrish always said, 40,000 eyes on Larry Bird because they knew he was going to get the ball. And uh, we knew it, our opponents knew it, and now it's just up to them to stop it. And I believe that tension on Larry Bird that was so focused and, you know, people were so microscopic on, on top of being on top of Larry Bird that it opened up many opportunities for his other teammates as well. Celtics will win this series. Man, he was doing a little bit of everything. I don't know really what he was doing in that fourth quarter, but the stuff that he was doing, it was unbelievable, man. I mean, he was throwing left-hand shots, running hooks. Uh, his game was at another level. We was trying to match each other's will. 20 of his 34 in the fourth quarter. Dump. 20 of his 34 in the fourth quarter. <laughs> my man, mind yeah. Larry Bird hit more. My man just laughed. All he could do is laugh shots you know in pressure situations than than any place told yeah. you about each and every one right you talked about larry burr saying someone's got to lose this game when did he say mm -hmm. that to you early in the fourth or late in the fourth no it was the late in the fourth quarter um it was it was probably like i don't know 30 40 seconds to go in the game i think it was a timeout or we were taking the ball out of the bounds i can't remember what it was but i remember him saying that and that was he said you know, we both deserve to win, but somebody got to go home. I believe that was a respectful, competitive statement. We both, both of us want to win, but both of us, hold on, run it back. Was, but I remember him saying that, and that was, he said, you know, we both deserve to win. but some We both deserve to win, but somebody got to go home. I feel like that was a respectful way of saying, I respect your game as you respect mine, but one of us got to come out with this win. He got to go home. And, man, to his credit, man, he took the Celtics and put them on his back. Mm -hmm. And he would call the spot. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> but he never called a spot against me. I believe that's also legendary. For legend versus legend, if you can't call the spot on someone that you used to throw, and that means they wasn't, they wasn't, you know, they kept you on your P's and Q's. Rather than Larry Burrow used to tell people the spot that was just, Easy, you know what I'm saying? I'll tell you the spot just to try to give me some type of competition because you suck. You know what I'm saying? But it was like he ain't called a spot on him, you know what I'm saying? Because he respected his game and he gave it all. His, you know, from a legend to legend type of vibration, energy, and, you know, just overall just filling out the room, you can tell when somebody giving a day off versus when they not, right? And anything in life. <laughs> you know, that's got to be respect. When I tell people Larry Bird talk, trash yes and let you know <laughs> let you know every time but it, it ain't the trash it wasn't the trash where it was the meaning mm -hmm. you know it's like i'm gonna shoot left hand at this time right or, right or you why put you put a white boy guard well, pretty much that was it i mean that was one of the greatest performance i've seen 
from a guy in those circumstances, because you're talking about seven game in the playoffs, to carry his team the way he did in that fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. When you talk about the clutch shots, he hit 10 clutch shots I was gonna in say. that game. It was crazy too, because it's rare in a game, you feel it. Like, you know, you guys have been in games where after the game, people say, man, that was the most amazing game, but you were in it. And you're like, you know, I, I, I didn't feel that. I knew it was mm -hmm. a good game. Right. That was one of the few games I was saying, this, this that was it. Yeah, when you went in, you actually like, oof. Wipe the swell, that was some work. You know what I'm saying? Game right it. Now. <laughs> it was a hell of a game. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. He's like poetry in motion. I mean, he knew how to play the game before you even got got to him. And it was a shootout in the fourth quarter. It came down to the last shot. One left to ponder what might have been, the other to lead his team on. And let me know what you Well, that was legendary, man. That was legendary within itself. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Get this video a big thumbs up, man. Helps crush that YouTube algorithm. It's totally free. Comment down below any legendary top of the movie action videos you guys want to see. And remember, family, let the love supersede the hate. Always spreading that peace, love, and positivity. Always. Peace, family. Just want to let you know that. I'm out.